to the Crime Espresso Shot Podcast. We're your hosts, Carrie and Ingrid, and we are bringing crime stories from around the world in hopes of bringing awareness to help keep you and your family safe. Now, today's episode, we'll be talking about the LADA Garçon, right? And at issue here are Garçon's new policies, which victims and families say benefit only the defendant and the criminals. Ingrid, fill us in. What's happening in LA? Let me tell you, George Agascon, the Soros-backed former district attorney of San Francisco, is now the district attorney for Los Angeles County. And he was sworn in on December 7, 2020. And in mere weeks, he's put into place some of the most radical pro-criminal and anti-prosecution policies. Some have said he's changing the gold standard for rogue prosecutors. The impact of his reckless and dangerous policies is just starting to be felt. And it will come into full view in months and years ahead. Listen, Gascon's, he's instituted a dizzying number of changes. And here are some examples. Revoking cash bail, banning death sentences, scrapping sentencing enhancement for hate crimes Mm -hmm. and a shocking punch to victims. He has this new default policy. This DA's office is no longer sending representatives to parole hearings to support victims. They have to go by themselves to face the convicted criminal. This is just horrible. And thank God he's getting some blowback from, uh, you know, from crime victims, from prosecutors, because it really feels a little bit more sinister. He's trying to fundamentally reverse engineer the role of prosecutors by favoring and benefiting defendants, which really is an attack on victims and police officers. Now, these policies are shunning victims all while cozying up to criminal defense attorneys. Now, he's not protecting the victims or the vulnerable, and they are the ones that truly need the protection. He wants to protect the violent offenders. He's joined uh, some of the radical DAs out there across our country as soon as he was sworn in. And really, when we think about those radical people, we can look at Boston's Rachel Rollins, or perhaps Baltimore, Maryland, uh, Mosby, or in Chicago, we have Kim Fox, right? All implementing policies that favor defendants. And during this time, they are ignoring drug laws. They're uh, prohibiting prosecutors from filing certain misdemeanor charges and cutting sweetheart deals with defense attorneys, all of which contribute to a spike in crime, including homicides in their cities. And, and you know, they're also, really damaging the relationships with local police officers and victims advocate groups, right? So we need to protect the victims and support police in their job of, you know, really protecting our communities. So let's just look, I mean, even in uh, Los Angeles, the number of murders have increased by 20% compared to 2019 to 2020. This is crazy. And not this only, is crazy. yeah, yeah, yeah. Not only is he banning new death sentences, but he wants to convert all death sentences into alternative okay. sentences. Uh-huh. So the breadth and scope of his radical policies imposed on his first day in office are insane. Okay. <laughs> Gascon has special directives and their impact. And as from day one, all the prosecutors are in his office are required to read and know all of these policies. And they're also in the legal policies manual. So this is nothing sort of completely outrageous aimed at his own office and prosecutors. He's undercutting and undermining them in the performance of their duties. Mm-hmm. And he, he, he wrote these with his, the assistance of his transition teams and his public policies advisors. Virtually all criminal defense attorneys or radical pro-criminal activists. These policies mm-hmm. benefit murderers, cop killers, child and adult rapists, career mm-hmm. felons, and other dangerous criminals. None of his policies benefit victims of crime. Right, victims of hate crimes, elder abuse, child abuse, sexual abuse, sex trafficking, and financial crimes, right? All of these are the people 
who need the support, who need protection, who need a good DA, right? Ah, it's just unbelievable. And, and let me tell you, I'm gonna get, tell you a little bit of a story here. A gang mm. member and a double murderer convicted in a shooting. He killed two teenagers at a party in Los Angeles more than 30 years ago. He was found to be suitable for parole by the state at a recent hearing. And at that hearing, prosecutors weren't allowed to be part of the of the hearing. You know, right. th this is part of District Attorney Gascon's reforms. So, and as we talk about his reforms, we got to look back at how things were done before, right? So, for decades before he his arrival in the prosecutor's office, they routinely sent representatives to the hearings to argue against early release of offenders. But Garcon's plan puts an end to that practice. Instead, the department's new default policy, he argues, will help uh, lessen the longer prison sentences. And he thinks that this will do less harm to our communities, which is a joke, right? So I think this one might be a little hard to defend, especially for an upcoming uh, parole hearing for a child rapist who, how, how do you defend a guy that he's 46 years old, a San Fernando Valley man. He was convicted of sexually assaulting a brother and a sister. They were age eight and six. Awful. He's definitely someone that is a high risk for recidivism. Absolutely. Absolutely. And after serving 16 years of his 15 to life prison sentence, he was up for parole. He's up for parole in March. And in December, this mother of these two victims was one of the first people in the community to be uh, notified and she learned that the pros prosecutors are now barred from attending the parole hearing with her. Awful. On December 8th, she mm. got a phone call from the deputy DA who told her, um, and he, he had successfully prosecuted Beltran, he told her that he would not be supporting the family at the upcoming parole hearing. Mm. So stunned by yeah. this news, she was outraged. She called Gascon, she wrote letters to the LA County, and she tried to hire a lawyer. And she knew the criminal, uh, he was able to insert himself into her and her children during a time when she was having family problems. Right. She knows that this is a man who preyed on her vulnerabilities during this time. This is a man that will do this again. He was calculated, he was vicious, and it's outrageous that he's right. going to have the opportunity to get out there and do it again to and, another family. And she's gonna have no support, nobody with her. And even some of career prosecutors took the unusual step of suing their new boss. They claimed that his directives not only violated state law, mm -hmm. it violated their oath of office, it, uh, it violated ethical and professional obligations. The court ruled as we expected in holding the district attorney cannot order his prosecutors to ignore laws. You can't, they, they can't ignore laws and, and that protect public from repeat offenders. Right. He has this new nickname. It's oh. called Progressive Prosecutor. Oh, geez. And to soften the blow to victims, he says he recognizes that these are big changes, but they are changes that will enable us to protect the truly vulnerable. No. What? what a joke. He's not protecting the victimized and the vulnerable, and yet they're the ones who need the protection, not the criminals and the predators, right? He wants to protect the violent offenders. You know, if Gus Gom's policies remain in force, other rogue prosecutors currently in office and those running in the future may well already adopt this playbook that he has, which is really to the detriment of public safety around sure. the country, but more importantly, the residents of Los Angeles who will mm -hmm. suffer in ways we can't imagine. And they've already suffered. So don't believe us. Just ask those who live in San Francisco right. while Gascon was in office there. Um, he was fully raped. He has a, a horrible, tre tremendous and horrible track rec record in San Francisco. Right. right. So if accomplishments mattered, Gaston would have never been elected as the Los Angeles DA, right, in the first place. He, Gaston was the DA in San Francisco from 2011 to 2019. And under his tenure in the, as the San Francisco DA, 
crime exploded. Ask virtually anybody of San Francisco who, who's a resident in San Francisco, as long as they're not a criminal, right? You can ask anybody there, how was crime during this period of time? And if they're not a criminal, they'll say it was bad, right? They'll tell you how dangerous the city became under Gascon's tenure. Gascon was a rape victims nightmare in San Francisco. Yeah. Rape in the five years before he took office in San Francisco, there were 757 reported rapes, which was an average of 151 per year. Nice. But in the last five years in office, after he implemented his policies, there were a stunning 1,731 rapes, an average of 346 per year. And in 2017 alone, there were 367 rapes and every year from 2014 to 2019, when he left office, there were more 300, you know, more than 300 rapes a year under his leadership. So Gascon, he can't explain yeah. why rapes went up under his tenure, right. but we know it's due to his lax policies that are to right. blame. For sure. And you know, this just goes right back to we need to support the communities. We need to have more programs in place to teach skills and educate kids. We want to help communities become strong. And we need leaders in place to help protect our families. And so as we end today, we want to leave our listeners with resources that if they have lost a loved one to murder or a violent crime, the Victim Support Service has been committed to providing trauma-focused care. And we believe that if we focus and we help people, they are resilient. And with guidance and addressing their emotional, spiritual, and physical well-being, they can heal after suffering trauma. And you can find help at victimsupportservices.org. And we always say, you have to know the risk to avoid your risk. So make sure you improve your situation awareness, you stay safe and healthy. And thank you to all the police officers working so hard to bring justice to victims who have suffered violent crimes. And we want to make sure you never miss a story with so much stuff happening out there in the world. So hit that follow button. And that was your espresso shot for the day. That's right. Have a great day.